Hello everyone and welcome back to Switzerland. Today I'm in Geneva and one of my favorite activities in this city is to walk or to run along the river Arve. Because this river often looks very different. Some days the flow is very low and the river looks clear and calm. On other days the flow is much higher and there is a lot of cloudy water rushing through the channel. Have you ever asked yourself where all the water in the river is coming from? And why from time to time the amount of water in the river is so variable? That is what we're going to find out in this video. Are you ready to explore? When we talk about the amount of water in the river, we often use the term discharge. And discharge is the volume of water flowing by a specific point in the river in a given unit of time. For example, we can express the discharge in how many cubic meters of water is flowing by a specific point in the river every second. In Geneva, the discharge of the Arve is measured just a bit upstream from this spot. And at the moment, approximately 70 cubic meters of water flow by this point every second. That is approximately three small truckloads full of water that flow by this point every second. That's quite a lot, huh? As you can probably imagine, the discharge isn't always exactly the same at this point in the river. Sometimes a lot of water comes rushing through, whereas other times the river is much calmer. In addition, the discharge also ferries along the river. That means if I walk upstream or downstream, the amount of discharge will change. In order to understand the variation of discharge in both space and time, we first need to understand where all the water in the river is coming from. In order to figure that out, we have to trace the Arve all the way upstream into France. And if we do that, you will discover that the Arve originates in the French Alps near the Mont Blanc Massif. The water in this river mostly comes from the melting of snow and glaciers in the mountains, as well as from rain. But it is important to understand that a river collects water over a large area and the entire area that supplies water into a river is called a drainage basin. So let's look what happens to the snow melt and the rain that falls in the drainage basin of a river. During and after it has snowed or rained, the water can evaporate, it can infiltrate into the ground, or it can be absorbed by plants and trees. Also, part of the water will flow directly off land surface and after a while this water begins to concentrate in little mountain streams. These little mountain streams will then flow in larger mountain streams and eventually these larger mountain streams will flow into the main river and in this case that is the Arve. And we call all the smaller rivers and streams in the drainage basin that flow into the main river tributary streams. So for most rivers it's true that the further downstream the higher the discharge because more tributary streams were able to supply water to the main stream. So on average the discharge of the river Arve in Geneva is much higher than the average discharge of the Arve in Chamonix in France. Because Chamonix is located very close to the source of the river whereas Geneva is located way further downstream. So we have learned that the discharge of a river varies along stream. And now you know that the river is fed by rain, snow and glacial meltwater from the mountains, you probably also start to understand how the discharge varies over time. For example, a few days ago, the discharge of this river was only 25 cubic meters per second approximately one small truckload full of water per second flowed by, compared to the three truckloads of water that flow by at the moment. That day the discharge was low because it was very cold and dry weather at the beginning of January. That means there was barely any snow melting in the mountains and there was also no rain at lower elevations. This resulted in a calm and low river. 
The last couple of days, however, there has been a lot of precipitation in the drainage basin. Plus, the temperatures increased a few degrees. That means more water from snowmelt and rainfall is draining into the river Arve, resulting in a higher discharge. Now you know more about the discharge of the river Arve, can you tell me in which season the discharge is highest and why? You probably answered my question right. It's in the spring, when all the snow that fell in the mountains in the winter is melting during the increased temperatures. Now if you combine the already increased discharge in the spring with a big rainstorm, the amount of water in the river can be extremely high and even result in flooding. This for example happened in May 2015, when the discharge here in Geneva was 900 cubic meters per second. That is almost 13 times as high as it is today. You now have learned that the discharge of the river varies in space and time. And as you were watching this video, you may also observe that the velocity at which the water flows is related to the discharge. When the discharge is very high, the river flows fast. But when the discharge is much lower, the river flows slower. This is an important observation, because the speed at which the river flows determines how erosive the river is, but it also determines how much sediment the river can carry. The faster the river flows, the more capacity it has to erode the sides of the riverbanks. And the faster the river flows, the bigger the particles of sediments the river can carry. However, when the river flows very slowly, it doesn't have much capacity to erode the banks, and it can also not carry very many sediments, and thus the water looks much clearer. Can you observe the difference? Finally, the width and the depth of the river channel are also related to the discharge. The higher the discharge, the larger the river channel. That is why the rivers downstream are often much wider and deeper compared to the smaller streams in the mountains where the discharge is much lower. You have learned so much about rivers today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like to learn still more about rivers, please check out my video on La Junction the place where the River Arf flows into the River Rhone, creating a spectacular confluence. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye!